Hi, this is Paul from Echo Classic Computer Consoles, and today I want to do a quick little review on something I got in the mail. And what this is is a little item that a lot of us need, and it's a great solution to get your Amiga to work on a modern monitor. So let's go ahead and unbox this, take a look, and see what we've got, and talk a little bit about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and unbox this here. And again, you can see Edo shipped it pretty well. And what do we have here? This is the Scan A Plus AGA. It's a great little device, similar to the Indivision AGAs that many people have probably seen in the past. This is a little bit about what it comes in. Nothing too complex. But you can see here we have the main unit and the secondary unit. As you can see here on the secondary unit, this plugs onto the Alice. And it's one of those type of adapters, similar to the Indivision, that just snaps right over the top of the machine. So we'll take a look at that here in a moment. And the main unit. Nicely made. And this, as you can see on here, so it attaches to the Lisa. So again, very similar to the Indivision AGA, just much more simple. There's no software that goes with this or anything like that. It is just a simple way to get the Amiga's native display out to a modern LCD or CRT monitor through VGA. In here you can see the nice adapter that it comes with, the connected VGA with an Amiga 1200 3 printed back port on it as well. So let's get this thing connected and we will be right back and see how it looks. Okay, so let's go ahead and install this. And it's pretty simple. Uh, the easiest way to do it, as you're looking at the Amiga 1200 with all of your ports up to the top, all of the printing for the name of the, of the device, so Scan Plus AGA, will face up so you can, you can read them. So as far as the Alice adapter goes here, it connects right here on Alice this way. And you look on the Alicia adapter, same thing. You're going to want to make sure that the text is up and it will face on your Lisa chip just like so. So you'll snap it into place right like that, snap this into place right like that, and then connect the connectors. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, these things just fit right over the top of the chip. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that they aren't cocked or anything. Keep them nice and straight without actually snapping in. Make sure it fits good. And then have it on a good surface so you're not going to flex the board. And just give it a nice push. And you, you'll feel it snap into place. And again, it, it hits good. So you'll know if it's on. Just make sure that it's sitting flush. You, you really don't want to risk bending any of these pins or causing any kind of shorts. And again, the same thing with your your Lisa adapter. Just set it on there, make sure that it's nice and square, and give it a little push, and you'll hear it snap right in place. So again, this one is on there nice and secure. It's in place, and we will take the adapter and plug it in and make sure that the cable is properly installed. So looking at this, you want to make sure that your pin 1 is in fact in the right location. And you can see that by the dot on the board and the other dot on the board here. And then we're going to go ahead and put the VGA connector on. And when you put this on, again, you want to make sure that the little nub and with the arrow on it goes down. So that's it. That's the install. So what we'll go ahead and do now is I'll move this over, we'll hook it up to an LCD monitor and we'll see how it goes. Okay, we are all hooked up. I've got this connected to a Dell LCD monitor. It is a U2410. Now this monitor actually will in accept native input. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to make sure that I could show you that it is in fact hooked up to VGA. So you can see here that it's connected to the VGA connector. Nothing is coming out of the 
of the native display port. And there you go. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here and... Okay, so we're here in the native workbench mode. Let's go ahead and see what resolution we're in here. And I, I do notice on this LCD screen that it is a little bit washed out, not too terrible. Uh, but again, they do recommend that you use this on a CRT VGA monitor, not an LCD. So that was expected. But it is actually a very good picture. It's completely usable. It's, it's nice. I don't see too much tearing or anything like that. Uh, the text is nice and crisp. And I believe that this is, a, this is PAL mode. This is a PAL motherboard. So let's see where we're at. So we are in PAL high res now. Um, I've been told this doesn't do interlace, so let's see what it does on interlace mode. But yeah, so again, there's clearly no flicker fixer in here. This is just a scan doubler. So interlace mode passes straight through. The nice thing about this monitor is I can actually put it in all of these modes and it does not flicker, but this is coming through here, so apparently the monitor does not take that into into account and, and fix it like it does natively. So let's get out of this mode. Let's see what uh, PAL low res looks like. So, quite big. But again, it looks not, not too bad. Nice clear picture. We'll go back into the high res mode because that seems to be the nicest view so far. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this looks with the game playing. We'll go ahead and load up Battle Squadron here and the WHD load game. Well, that's not terrible. Yeah, it's completely usable. See very much blurring at all. The game is playing quite well. It's it, it's really is a nice little solution. And for the price, you really can't beat it. And the nice thing about this is this works with the 4000 as well as the 1200. Um, most of the available Indivisions that I've been looking for were not available for the 4000 anymore, which is why I got this. As I wanted to, to be able to put it on my 4000 just case I wanted to use it on a monitor that's not compatible. But this looks perfectly great. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, so there you have it. The Scan Plus AGA on an A1200. It's a Bone Stock 1200. Completely usable. I'd say I'd definitely give it a thumbs up. It's worth your money. Plays game perfectly fine. Uh, this works just as good as my Envision does, as, as far as I can tell. You know, with the exception of the flicker. But people aren't, you know, you're not buying these to have high resolution displays. You're, you're buying them to be able to play games on your classic MD again. And this definitely fits that bill. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I look forward to doing some more videos like this.